Uh, the 76ers have made the playoffs in all four seasons. Daryl Morey has been their president, basketball ops, one of the smartest guys in the sport. So I am a fan of the play-in tournament. And I do think a lot of it has to do with the iPhone and the TikTok and the distractions. We are a distracted society. There's more noise. There's more, there's more platforms. And so people, to get them to a TV, it's Sundays. It's March Madness. It's Caitlin Clark. It is predictable. It's Barbie. It's Mission Impossible. To get people to theaters and games. And I've never been a fan of seven-game first-round NBA playoffs, but I like the plan. The urgency. I'll be watching tonight. Are you a fan of it, or does it can it punish veteran teams who maybe had an injury and kind of snuck in, but you know they're better? So from a fan perspective, you're preaching to the choir. I think one and done, and I think I even got in trouble by saying I would be one and done in the NBA playoffs because, to your point, people tune in based on how important the game is and how uncertain the outcome is. And one and done, you're, you're, you know, the quality of the product doesn't even have to be, doesn't have to be very good. Like, right. if people know that it's win or go home, it's a big thing. I would do it more. I would have the first two seeds get a buy. I'd have the next two get traditional home court. I'd shorten the series. And then I'd have everyone play in for four to six. I wouldn't even have eight make the playoffs. I'd make the regular season worth more. Then the regular season's worth more. The top seeds that do it get a buy. And there's a huge play in to be the, the five or six to play in the first round. I think that would be massive ratings. I love it. Now, Right now, as an executive, I hate it. Right, I, I really, I really wish we were just playing the playing the two seed uh, and didn't have to play in. But for the league, I think it's a tremendous thing. So I think the Sixers match up very well with the Knicks, and I would take you in that series. I don't know if you can beat Miami. Uh, the coach, the style. Um, you know, you're an interesting team. You're a good team. Embiid makes you potentially great. He leaves, you struggle. He comes back, you go on a heater. I, I always say late season NBA winning streaks, be careful. Some of the bad teams, they don't mind losing. Some of the good teams are resting stars. What do you make of your winning streak at the end of the year? What do you make of it? Should I buy into it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think, look, we did have a couple games in there that you would call like late, late season teams not trying to win, but we also had a, quite a few good wins in there, Orlando, uh, being one, we beat Miami uh, in this streak in Miami. Um, so I, I look to us, it's really not about the eight game winning streak. It's how we're playing. Uh, and, and Joel has come back strong. Uh, we did hold him out precautionary here in the last game so that he could go into the playoffs, you know, as fresh as he's ever been. Um, and yeah, we, we, we like how we're playing. Uh, we've got a couple injuries that, uh, you know, just like almost every team, uh, going in, I know the Heat have some injuries. Look, the Heat are a tough out. We know that. Uh, we know that for a fact. Uh, uh, but look, I mean, this is why we're here. This is why we play. Our guys are ready, and and I really think, besides Joel, this will be, you know, Maxie's uh, coming out party uh, for the NBA. You have always been a mile ahead of people on analytics. You tend to see around corners better than most. I have been critical. I, th I think Adam Silver's excellent, but I do think he sort of marginalized college basketball, and I think there's value in good coaching and Tom Izzo and Coach K and Jay Wright, and I, I like college basketball. It microwave stars. Only reason I know who Zion is is Duke. Um, and I think sometimes I'll watch a Jalen Green and I think, God, the first two years, I'm not, he's finally getting coaching and he's a remarkable talent. So international players come in, they play against older players. The games mean more when they come up. It does appear international stars and in international basketball has taken sort of a lead role in the development of players. The, the MVP, does, is that a fair criticism by me? Are there things about the domestic culture that bother you in basketball? I mean, we're still the the number. I mean, number one team in the world. Uh, our team will be the favorite in the Olympics coming up. We'd be the favorite in any tournament. I love how the international game has caught up, and it makes sense that some of the elite players are coming from international. There's just more. There's just more players. I mean, I'd be. I wouldn't be shocked that there'll be a top player from India in not too long. They now are the most populous countries country on earth. So. 
I think it makes sense that you're getting this variance and getting these elite players. Uh, but I, I do think the American game is uh, overly uh, criticized. Uh, we're still developing the best players in the world. I think you can nitpick some things, but I'm still very pro U.S. basketball. Do you feel your organization, because of a lack of ability to win a second playoff series, do you guys feel some heat? Do you feel personally some heat that you got to start stacking some playoff wins? We know you're good. We know Embiid's MVP. We know all that stuff. We know Maxi can play. We know the roster has length and stars. But people are saying, we want more Ws in the playoffs. Do you sense that pressure? Yeah, no, the, I think heat, I don't think, is the right word. Whatever, you, you're good at this, the, the, uh, the hyperbole, <laughs> Colin, that's your business. But I would say, look, this is the whole reason I'm here. Elton Brand's here, Nick's here, Joel's here. Uh, this is, uh, look, every year is critical. And the whole point we're here is to win the championship. We, we have a little bit of harder road, mostly because of injury this year, uh, but it's set up there for us to do it, and the job is to do it. So, yeah, the, the heat is very high, as it should be. Yeah. By the way, Joel Embiid, you dealt with stars in this league. What is it like having Joel Embiid as your star? What is he like as a personality? Wonderful, super, super intelligent, um, like, you know, thinks the game. That's one thing I've had pretty consistent with the stars I've worked with. So I don't think it's an accident. They're not only elite physical talents, but they're also elite basketball IQ and work ethic. Um, Joel adding stuff to his game every year, even at, at age 30 now coming up, or he maybe just turned, I think, um, is pretty remarkable. Um, you know, I would say just, uh, I've, I've worked with a bunch of amazing players, but at, at his peak, I, I just don't see anyone who's had the two-way impact of Joel that I've worked with. So I've been blessed yeah. to work with him. He's a joy with coach nurse. He's, he loves the strategy. He loves sitting with coach nurse and talking how to beat teams. Um, he, yeah, he's a joy. All right. Tonight, the warriors Kings tomorrow, it's heat at the 76ers. Uh, and that is, I think both those teams match up very well with the Knicks. Cannot wait to see how you, you know what being home matters for that game. That, that helps it much. <laughs> No question. Yeah, so we played the Heat early in this eight-game win streak going in, and we pretty much knew we had to win it to avoid the plan. That didn't work. But we absolutely knew we had to win it to avoid going to Miami. Look, a lot of respect to Spolstra and Jimmy Butler and Bam and all their great players. I mean, this is not a team that we're going to have to go out there and win the game. Like, they're not going to beat themselves. Uh, and they're, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a, a tough road, but hey, this is what the playoffs are for. If we can't beat the Heat, we're probably not going to win the title. Daryl Morey, 76ers, will be watching. Great to see you. Thanks for making time for us. We appreciate it. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.